sure people are wondering. Good morning. What's up with the Grom? Uh, it ended last Sunday. We've chosen a winner. He's been accepted. Here's your announcement. It's our first official California winner. I believe someone correct me if I'm wrong. His name is Dylan Marin or Marin from California. Congratulations. Unfortunately for him, but not unfortunately for him, he chose the cash option. So you had the option of the Grom plus shipping or $5,000. He chose the $5,000, so we still have the Grom. We may give it away as a consolation prize, second place prize, whatever you want to call it, or a mini giveaway within the giveaway for the next giveaway car, which starts Sunday, Saturday night at midnight, which is Sunday, um, and runs until after the new year. We're gonna run this one. If you want your merch for Christmas, guaranteed, you have to place the order before December 1st. Anyway. Here's a little teaser of the next giveaway car. Starts this Sunday and goes until January 1st, but we like to incentivize day one. So we'll do something special. I'll announce it, uh, or maybe week one. Here in my garage, just checking out my R33 here. Super fun to drive on the Connecticut back roads. But you know what I value more than this R33? Is my Nissan Knowledge. I'm more proud of uh, these shelves I use to hold all this all these bullshit parts. If you know, you know. Here on Technical Tuesdays, we're gonna teach you all the things that have disappeared from the old forums and uh, we're gonna try to lay them out in a super easy to reference and easy to understand layout. We're gonna show you the differences from engine, subframe, suspension arms, interior pieces, and what works between all of the chassis. So that's my little intro for Technical Tuesdays. This one's super cool, let's get into it. Good morning and welcome back to the channel. So just wanted to explain Technical Tuesday. It might not actually be on Tuesday. Luckily today, while we're filming this, it is Tuesday, but it might not go up on Tuesday. We've got a lot of very crazy interchangeability between all of the chassis and I'd like to slowly pick away at the easy ones because I think this information is useful to everyone and it's really difficult to find, uh, especially with Skylines. Not talking shit, but the Australians are nowhere near as good at keeping records as old forum Americans. Is that safe to say, Josh? Yeah, I don't feel like they were necessarily Nazioc. Right, or Honda Tech. So, the only Australian Skyline group is SAU. I think it's Skyline, I don't know actually what it is at all. Skyline Australia is something. But regardless of that, the information isn't out there. So I thought because we have a plethora of Nissans, a plethora of Skylines, and a plethora of parts, I'd be able to offer something different than just a vlog. So today, we're on one of my favorite subjects, and that is subframes. We've got all these subframes out, and really quickly, they all look identical. That's actually the coolest part about them. So, starting from here, we've got 32, 33, and 34 GTR specific. These are all-wheel drive subframes. The way you can tell is the dual mounting points. I need you guys to know this. I just saw EOT, shout out Josh EOT. Um, he bought a GTS4 to drift and found out it was a previous all wheel drive car that someone converted and you can't put a two wheel drive front subframe in it. So if you wanna watch that and see what he was talking about, go over there. But if you look underneath your skyline and you have one of these big bulky subframes, it is or was all wheel drive. So starting here, we have the 32. 32 to 33, not massively different. This car was the only one that came with hydraulic Hikus, which is the all-wheel steering. You'll see this tab here and this tab here are present. And this one doesn't have those tabs because this had electronic Hikus. That is actually the mounts for mounting the Hikus lines. It's the line. It's the power steering like feed line. Right, right. So with that, this is all open. I don't know if Mike can get a shot of that, but my finger goes in there. This one is reinforced in this front area. Just a subtle change that they did to the 33. I see no other differences and someone in the comments can even help us out further. And if they know of anything specifically besides what I just mentioned, put it in the comments. The steering rack locations are the same. Mounting points are the same. This tab is there, motor mount, Oh, everything's the same that we've seen. We've inspected these pretty good. It is tough because they're black, and it's probably tough for you guys to see. Moving along, 
from the 33, which has slight differences. The 34 has all of the biggest differences. The first thing is how the steering rack mounts. It gets rid of the dual clamp system and the rack actually bolts directly to this mount here and kind of the same here. Uh, there's a lot of speed holes drilled in it. You'll see all these. Mike, cue the Simpsons clip with the speed holes. You're gonna have to find that clip. Only 38,000. Hey, what are all these holes? These are speed holes to make the cargo faster. Oh yeah, speed holes. You want my advice? I think you should buy this car. What you diddly doing, neighbor? I'm putting speed holes in my car. Makes it go faster. Is that so? Um, and there's added tabs for the front splitter or the under tray or whatever. Um, a lot of holes though. You'll notice a lot of holes. So this technically should be lighter. Should we take out the scale? Yeah. You think it's lighter? You know where the scale is, right? So from the 32 to 33, not a big difference. There's some reinforcement. 33 to 34, massive reinforcement. Uh, these holes are new. You won't find them on this. This one's actually rather large. Holes, holes, holes here. There's just a lot of holes to make this thing lighter. I don't know if it does because you also have this. You think this is a little bulkier than that piece? Uh, no. No, this the, is definitely lighter. The rack has rubber bushings. So right. It's Straight in. So besides that, it's definitely an upgrade. Yeah. Safe to say it's an upgrade. Well, that's not okay. even the coolest part. What is? The coolest part to me on 34s in general is the fact, well, these anyway. So you have a tension rod, lower control arm, two separate ball joints. Two, it's mm. basically four pieces in total. On this one, it's all one piece because your ball joint's pressing. It's right. one aluminum arm. So I wouldn't say that's a subframe difference because to my knowledge, you can bolt all those arms into all these and vice okay, versa. So I just meant like with this. But that is stack. huge. You can do an aluminum lower one piece control arm, which we will get into at a later date on Technical Tuesday in the control arm differences because the 33 is just a, a, a literally an evolution of the 32 and 34. Yeah, like I, I can grab both pieces and look at them both. I know exactly right. what they look like. I can tell because of the casting stamp, but other than that, there's yeah, no like, difference. Yeah, like. The, the differences are crazy, but I think the biggest thing here in the subframes is this power steering rack mount. I don't know why they did that. Maybe it felt better. Maybe it was more rigid. Maybe this could slip or do something weird because this is just tension. I like this better. Like, this most, is most better. Cars are like this. this is better. It's more serviceable, right? Would you say that? Like getting when the engine's in here, this is a pain in the ass. Yeah. And it's um, it, it just it's just easier for maintenance. So you got the scale ready? So luckily I have this uh, meat hook scale. So we hit zero. Crane scale, go ahead, throw the 32 one on there first. Where do you think the best place to grab it from is the rear subframe mount? Yeah, it's right there. All right, let's see. Let's see how accurate. What the fuck is this in? Kilograms. How do I change it? Oh, unit? Yeah. You gotta go to American. I had it. There you go. 37. So it was pretty accurate our first one. So the 32 is 37 pounds. 37.16 pounds. I like this. For this one, we got 38.34. So it's a solid pound heavier. I don't know what the point three four is. 34 and a quarter versus 34 and an eighth. Like yeah. it's, or th I'm sorry, 37 and an eighth versus 38 and a quarter. So not bad. All right, let's check 34 one. And lastly, we have the 34 one, which is 37.32. So barely, I'm glad we used this instead. Yeah, it's barely heavier than the 32 one. Tons of reinforcement, but tons of lightning. So I think the reinforcement added the weight and then drilling the holes took it back away. If you look up the 32, 33, 34 weights, that's why they call the 33 the boat. It's the heaviest by a very small amount. I wanna say 20 pounds, but the 34 is so much more technology in it that they stole ounces from shit like this these holes this big hole on this underside you've got all these and we'll have mike get shots of all those out on the table so we're going to put these upside down and show you the difference from the underside and that should conclude our subframe uh story our sub yeah this is some subframe shenanigans here <laughs> we love subframes and we love oem upgrades it is my i there's nothing i like more than being able to take a 30 for uh, subframe, put it into 32. Now, we'll go over why that's difficult and what parts you need after we get this thing 
back on the table, but some would argue it's not worth it. Okay, so you'll notice from the backside all of the extra speed holes, and you could tell Nissan was like kind of fucking around. They drilled this one. They did the same thing on this. There's a couple extra holes in this one that I forget. I think they're on the other side. But then with this one, they reinforced these further. But they had they reinforced these, but they put a hole in it. And this must have to do with the different tension rod, like being able to service it or something, slip it in there. Um, so these are more solid, which obviously made it more rigid, but made it heavier. And they made up that weight by taking huge holes. There's four here. Three here. There's only one on each side there. They just they just punch holes everywhere. It's funny though, because if you dull your eyes away from the holes, and you figure 1989, 1999. Right. That's huge. <laughs> and all they did was drill some fucking holes. Drill some holes and add some shit. That's so it. the craziest thing is they reinforced this on the 33, and then went back to the drawing board and was like, oh, we could just blast a bunch of holes in this because the 32 didn't even have the reinforcement. No. But I think things like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think things like this are are uh, hugely beneficial in the 32. I don't. I think they make the 34 obviously better than it would be if you put a 32 subframe in a 34. But I think putting 34 parts and 33 parts in the 32 edge it out so much harder because 32 is already light. It's a little noodly. It's not the the strongest chassis. But when you start doing things like this and fixing things like this, I think you get amazing results. Um, obviously, that's to be determined. In my car builds, my personal car builds, I'll be running a 33 subframe in my 32 because I don't have a spare 34 one. And I'll be running a 34 one in my 33 because I do have one spare. I don't have two. Now, the subframe is not the hardest part to get. It's not the only piece you need. The important piece is uh the steering rack if you don't have the steering rack you can't do this and i don't have two 34 steering racks right and i don't want to buy one they're fucking expensive but the cool part about that is being that you already have the 33 the lines are the same for the 34 rack oh okay the difference is the steering sensor and obviously the mounting point. so tell me this if i tried to put a 34 and a 32 would i need to get 33 or 34 lines yes Okay, because the rack has a different size, or I need to do some weird steppage thing. They have little fins in it that are like a cooler. In right. Um, Basically, yeah. we'll have to do a whole technical Tuesday on control arms, and we'll have to do a whole, or maybe we'll have to do one on all the front suspension mm -hmm. and all the rear because the f the racks um, between 32 and 33 are the same except for that one fitting, right? Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. And then the racks between 33 and 34 are very different except that fitting is the same. Mm -hmm. So if that doesn't explain it, put in the comments. Uh, if this helped you, put in the comments. I'm hoping this can be, what's the word? When you're like looking for something. Helpful, beneficial. Yeah, hopefully this can be beneficial for years because when forums die, I don't think YouTube's going anywhere. I don't think this video is going anywhere. I'm gonna do my best to categorize them and put them on my YouTube in a way that you can watch all Technical Tuesdays and get somewhere with it. Um, but I have all this knowledge in my brain for just this dumb shit. And not only that, we have all the parts here we can just show you. And I think that's huge. So with that being said, if you like Technical Tuesday, put it in the comments. If this helped you or you plan on doing any of these upgrades to your Skyline, put it in the comments because I love to hear it. And if you've done anything weirder than this, that's really what I want to hear, I'll be honest. Shit that we don't do. Without fucking bastardizing. Yeah, yeah. If you do it by bolting it on, <laughs> put it in the comments. That's a, that's, that's a good point. If you had to cut, weld, or drill, we are uninterested. But if it's a bolt-on with this the right amount of parts, I'm super interested to hear. So um, the next one, we'll probably follow this up with the suspension because we have all of that as well. And it's really easy to access and throw on the table. So stay tuned for that. And if you have a request for a Technical Tuesday, put that in the comments. Because we don't think of everything. Anyway, that's it. Hope you liked our, our thing. And I hope you came to the same conclusion as me. The 34 is the best. Well, 34 part is the best. Not the chassis. This part in this lineup, the 34 is the best. You got anything else to say? Not really. That's it. <laughs> See ya.